This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so what we discussed in our last session, this is not relevant to you. Don't worry about this notepad. Let me close this. Okay, so what we discussed in our last class, we understood what exactly is SAP S4 HANA, right? Why do we need SAP S4 HANA? What is the basic difference between HANA and S4 HANA? Okay, and what are the new things which are available in S4 HANA compared to SAP ECC? Okay, so we understood there are three important things that we should remember in SAP S4 HANA. Number one is S4 HANA uses HANA database, which is providing us the speed, which is much faster compared to the way in which we were executing the transactions in ECC. So number one is HANA database, which is providing us the speed. Number two is SAP Fiori, which is providing us the user interface, which is providing us new user interface. And number three, it is providing the simplified functionalities. So not only the speed and the new user interface, but some functionalities are also simplified. For example, the reconciliation issues that we were facing in SAP ECC from FI and CO point of view, those reconciliation issues are gone because there is a new table in place which is going to make sure that all your data is reconciled and available at one single place, right? So apart from that, in our last session, we also understood the basic concepts like what is in memory, what is column based data storage, right? We understood the HANA capabilities, why HANA is faster. Okay, HANA is faster because it stores the data in RAM. HANA is faster because it stores the data in the column based data form. So three things that we discussed, HANA, Fiori and simplified uh, processes out of which HANA topics we already completed. We understood why HANA is faster. So what are we going to do today is we are going to discuss about Fiori. What exactly is Fiori? How Fiori is better than the traditional GUI? How to access SAP Fiori apps? How to provide the necessary roles and authorizations to the end users? And what are the different kind of applications available on Fiori? Okay, so our today's session will concentrate on Fiori. So first of all, what is Fiori? What do you know about Fiori? Can you tell me what exactly is Fiori according to you? Fiori is a user interface, new user interface, and it and it is uh, provide the three la layers, basically uh, transaction apps and analytics and fact set. Okay. Yes. So in short, it is a new user interface. So when we say new user interface, what about the existing interface? Can I use the existing interface also or only option in S4 HANA is to use the new interface? Both we can use. We can use both, right? Which means if I show you the glimpse of SAP S4 HANA system, so let me log on to the SAP logon pad. So through <coughs> logon pad, I can still continue to use SAP application, right? You can see this is a, S4 HANA 1909 application, which is still allowing me to access via the logon pad where I can enter the client, I can enter the user ID and password in the same way as I was doing in SAP ECC. So this is what, this is the classical user interface. This is nothing new. This is the same interface that I was using earlier. Now, in addition to this, SAP has provided the new user interface also. So, it is up to the customers whether they want to use this classical interface or they want to use the new user interface. Okay, so there are some customers who are implementing S4 HANA, but they are not implementing SAP Fiori as of now. Maybe they will be doing in the phase two. So first priority is set up all the business processes in the system. And number two priority is we will start using SAP Fiori apps. There are some other customers who are implementing SAP and right from day one, they want to use SAP Fiori. And there is definitely, if you are going for cloud, if you are going for SAP S4 HANA cloud, the only option is SAP Fiori. In case of cloud, you don't have the option of using this traditional GUI anymore. Even SPRO, you'll not be able to access SPRO using this traditional GUI, right? So, 
how are you going to access SAP Fiori? How are you going to uh, see the link related to SAP Fiori? So there are two ways of accessing Fiori. Number one is if you are already logged in into the traditional GUI or classical GUI, from here you can write this transaction slash UI2 slash FLP. Okay, so just to remember this, UI stands for user interface and FLP stands for Fiori Launchpad. Okay, so if you double click on this, it will take you to the web user interface. Okay, Fiori is completely web based. Okay, and you will be able to actually open it in any browser. Okay, in this case, I am opening with the Google Chrome because it works based with the Google Chrome, but it is your choice. Okay, so you may find some of the guys who are saying it works based with Internet Explorer, others will say it works with Google Chrome. So it is your choice whether you want to work on which browser. Okay, so you can see when I use this link, okay, what is happening is whenever I'm going for this transaction slash UI2 slash FLP, what this transaction is doing, this is taking me to this link, okay, this particular link. Now another option is if I don't want to go again and again by traditional GUI, it is not unnecessarily required, right? I don't need to log in through traditional GUI and then double click on this activity. Instead of that, what I can do is I can simply create this link as my favorites. Okay, this is a web link. I can use it from anywhere provided I have the necessary authorizations. Okay, so if it is controlled by VPN, then definitely out, outside your company network, you may not be able to see anything on this link. Okay, but as long as this is a web link and if the access is open, I can use it from anywhere. Right, so you can directly use this link to connect to Fiori also. It is not necessary that every time you go to the traditional GUI and from traditional GUI, you will enter this transaction, not required. Okay, so if you already have this link, you will be able to see the screen. So let's compare this with traditional GUI. So when I double click on this logon pad, okay, I get this login screen, which asks me for client user password and language but in this case this is also a login page from fiori in this case it is not asking me for client it is only asking user password and language okay and that two languages are not completely supported as of now uh, if, if you want more number of languages definitely you need to contact your fiori consultant and they will activate it for you okay but forget about language what about client why system is not asking client here? Any idea? Does it mean there is no client concept in Fiori? Is it possible? Can we work on SAP system without the client concept? So client is still there in Fiori to my knowledge actually. Right, client is still there. But why then system is not asking for client in case of Fiori? Pro I couldn't. I um, I don't know how you do. Okay. Anyone else who wants to try it out? Why client is not required? Okay. Let me tell the reason. There is a very straightforward reason. We are using the link, and this link has already the client information. Which means, if there are multiple clients, if you have client 400, if you have client 800 then you will be getting two separate links. Okay, so this link already has a client information and it is not necessary that you will be able to see the client, right? In this case, I'm connecting to client 400, but I cannot see that in link because when this link is set up by the Fiori consultant at that time, they provide the client. Okay, so just don't normally as in various blocks also, very initial blocks, like not from the experts, but there are many places where I read the client concept is not there in Fiori. That is not possible at all, right? Client is definitely required. Only thing is you don't need a, to specify the client here because for each and every client, you will be getting a separate link. Okay, so when I'm using this link, this is by default connected to client 400. And that is the reason I don't need to provide client number again. Okay, but it is same. So it is still asking you client, user ID, password and language. Client is coming by default. And it is asking you other details. Now, question number two. 
What about the user ID and password? Do I need a separate user ID and password for Fiori? Or I can use the same user ID and password that I'm already using for classical GUI. We can use the same user ID and password. Yeah. It will be the same user ID, right? Yeah. It will be the same user ID and password, yes. So just remember, we don't need separate user ID and password to connect to Fiori because user is created in the system. User is not created separately for classical GUI and for Fiori. User is clear, created in the database. So once your user is already created in the database, you can access the transactions from your Fiori or from the traditional GUI. So your user ID and password would be exactly same to connect to both. So I'll enter my user ID and password, which is same as what I used in classical GUI. Now in this case, if you see what has happened is normally if I come from here, normally if I double click on this, so I already logged in, right? My user ID and password are already available when I logged in into the traditional GUI. So normally when I log in into this, what happens is it will not ask you for user ID and password again in Fiori. It will automatically open the home screen. Okay, but that is a setting that your Fiori consultants make. So they can allow without entering user ID and password. If someone comes from here and double click here, it can go to the home page directly or they can also configure in such a way that even if you are going from here, system will ask you the user ID and password. Okay, so just enter your user ID and password and press log on. Uh, what is this? Let's try once again. Don't know what was that error, but normally it works like this. So this is how you will be able to see the SAP Fiori home screen. This is called as a home screen or you can call it as a launch pad. Okay, so what is the home screen and why it is called as a launch pad? Once you enter your credentials, once you enter your username and password, you will be taken to the home screen. Now in this home screen, you will be only able to see those transactions for which you have the authorization. Okay, so just remember SAP Fiori is completely role based. If you have a proper role, then only you will be able to see any particular app. If you don't have any role, then you will not be able to see any app available in your Fiori launchpad. Right? So the question is, when I logged in my, with my user ID, you can see there are thousands of apps which I'm able to see. Okay, this is because my user ID if I show you my user ID, can you tell me where exactly I can assign the roles to my user ID, which is that transaction where you go and PS. assign the PSCG, PS. PFCG or SUIO? SU, 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 SU01. Right. PFCG is to create the role and SU01 okay. is to assign the role. Right. So I'll enter my user ID. Let's see what roles yes. are assigned to my user ID. So you can see there are a lot of roles assigned and that is the reason I'm able to see a lot of different things here. But if I don't want to see all these things, I just want to see, let's say, only one role I will assign and I will remove all the other roles. So let's say I want to delete all these things. Okay, admin keep it as it is because admin is related to uh, the technical Fiori, otherwise Fiori screen will disappear. But otherwise all the functionality related apps like purchaser, warehousing clerk, order fulfillment, inventory manager, or maybe in this case, I don't have anything assigned on finance. I can assign that also. So let's first delete it and save it, right? So now I have only limited roles assigned. So if I go to Fiori once again and try to refresh the screen, I'll be only able to see few apps which are relevant to that particular role. You can see now only how much 10, 15 apps, no, I'm sorry, even more than that. So it is still loading. So in this particular role also, there are a lot of apps. That is the reason I'm able to see all these things. Let's remove this also. Okay, so what I'll do is I will remove this particular role also and see what happens. So delete and click on save. Again, if I go and refresh this, now you can see I'm only allowed to see the admin related apps. 
I don't have any access to any functionality. Right? So by default, if you are not assigning any role to your Fiori, sorry, to your user from here, then the user will not be able to see anything on Fiori. But there is one catch here. Now, if I show you one thing, if you see my profiles, my user ID is already assigned to SAP underscore all, which is SAP all. What do you mean by SAP all? Whom we assign this SAP all access? Tell you to consultant. Sorry? Tell you to consultant. Uh, basically, the uh, the managers, maybe uh, the directors. Yeah, Usually it, it can be anyone, but the one, the person who we want to give the complete access, right? Full access. Full access. I mean, should not be an authorization problem. If I give SAP all, this person would be able to see everything, whatever is available in the system, right? Yes. So if that is the case. If I already have SAP all access provided to my user, then why I'm not able to see the Fiori screen? Why I'm only able to see few Fiori apps? The roles are not, Fiori roles are not assigned. Exactly. So there is a difference between the classical roles and Fiori roles. So when I say SAP all is assigned to my user ID, this doesn't mean that I'll be able to see all the Fiori apps. Because this SAP all is for classical GUI. In classical GUI, I can go to each transaction. I can go to any transaction if I want to create a purchase order or if I want to book the supplier invoice or maybe if I want to create a GL account. So I can do everything in case of traditional GUI because I have the access of SAP all. But the problem is SAP all will not give you the access of Fiori. The reason is Fiori apps or Fiori roles are completely independent of the normal classic GUI roles. Okay. Let's take an example. You are implementing SAP S4 HANA for one customer. Now, this customer is assigned to roles related to purchasing in the classical GUI which means he is able to go and create a purchase order. He is going for ME21 and without any problem, he is able to create a purchase order. Another user who is accountant, he is trying to go to FB70, he is trying to post the invoice. But when they are logging into SAP Fiori, they are not able to see create purchase order app. They are not able to see post incoming invoice app. So do you think that if I assign the role related to classical GUI that will automatically give him the role to use Fiori. That is not the case. SAP you Fiori. That only you are adding as a favorite, right? That only that are tiles will appear, right? No, no, no. Favorite tiles is different. Favorite tiles will come only when you have the required roles. If you don't have the roles, the app will not appear at all in your favorites. Okay, okay. Right, so first thing is you need to have the proper roles. If the roles are assigned to you, then only you'll be able to see that under your favorites. Right? So even if you have all the access required to work on the classical GUI, it is not necessary that your Fiori screen will show you those particular apps. Are you clear with this now? I just want no, to communicate. I, I, I have one. I have one query. Uh, roles are yes. uh, different. Roles are required, or same same role. We can assign the objects so that it will work. No, see, I'm talking about the standard roles. But if you want to create uh, the Z roles, then you can combine both. That is per perfectly fine. Okay. The standard roles which are delivered by SAP are different for classical GUI and for Fiori. There is a reason. Okay, normally you will not allow the user to log in through traditional GUI also or Fiori also. For the end user, it will be very confusing. If you ask him, either you do this or you do that. You need to give the very clear instructions to the user. Whenever you are creating the user manual also, you cannot say, okay, go to uh, go and try to use ME21N or you go to Fiori and try to use create purchase order. 
you have to give only one instruction right so if a customer is using fiori there is no need to provide the roles related to classical gui on the other hand if a customer is using classical gui then there is no need to provide the roles for fiori so you will be only giving whatever is recommended or whatever is opted by the customer whether they want to use classic gui or they will use fiori most of the time from the end user point of view you don't want to confuse them by giving both the options right okay. but there is one more problem let's uh, let's suppose we we will do some development work then he need the access of fiori for development as well as quality server then this facility is available yes 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 fiori is also available on development quality there is a separate link see okay this link what we are connecting let's say this is for the development server and for client 400 so for quality server there will be different link the link that you will be using is different and similarly you will be having the separate back end as you have today right so this let's say this is my development system whatever roles mm -hmm. i am assigning to the development client same roles may not be available in the quality in the quality you can give different roles okay so fiori link is separate for development for quality even within quality or development if you have multiple clients you have a separate link for fiori so it is completely independent of each other development quality are completely independent of each other clear okay okay now let's take a simple example okay now we are talking about those things which will come in the project so you are implementing sap s4 hana for one of the customer and this customer was using traditional gui till now obviously there was fiori was available in the sap ecc also but it was not up to uh, that mark and that is the reason customer was not using fiori now customer has decided that they will only use sap fiori in s4 hana and customer has given you the list let's take example in excel customer has given you the list that this user 1 will need the access of a uh, create purchase order this will also need the access of book supplier invoice this user will also get to post the payment okay and this will also get the or uh, see the display vendor balances okay so let's say this user is already assigned to whatever roles are required from the traditional gui point of view but now your task is to make sure that when this user is logging through fiori also he has the access of all these apps okay so how will you start how will you identify which apps are available from sap to create a purchase order to book the supplier invoice to make the payment and to display the vendor balances because in fiori i cannot use the transaction codes in traditional gui classical gui i can use the transaction codes but in fiori we don't have the access of transaction codes so how will you verify which app you will allow to the end user how will you start maybe sap will provide the link to access the apps and give SAP the will... related we need to add those tiles right that that is what you are driving in so but how will you add the tiles you are right we definitely need to yeah, add this tiles in the tiles. home page you can search and then add correct in the fury no 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 see the thing is okay let's let's try with your scenario so you are saying i will search here So as of now, my user ID. Just give me a minute. As of now, my user ID has only this much access, right? To my user, if I want to give the access of post outgoing payments, so do you mean I'll search here and I will say I want to use this? No, there is a Fiori admin where you can give the permission or the tile permit to the user. Just give me a minute. I'm just trying the option that Ramesh told. So he is saying I will search for the app here and I will fill in and I will make it available here, right, Ramesh? Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah. So that is not possible because you will be only able to search those your apps for which you have the authorization. 
if you don't have the authorization you even will not be able to search for that particular app okay okay so as of now these are the only options available if you want to delete any of this app that is available with you can delete any of this app but you cannot bring in the new app for which you don't have the rules right so let's understand how are you going to take care of this requirement number 1 what we try to do here is just try to write the transaction code uh i quickly unmute all of you to mute yourself there is some background noise you can go ahead with your question so what are the transaction code to create a purchase order me21n what is the transaction code to book the supplier invoice we were using transaction ap60 for example what is the transaction code to post the payment let's say f-53 or maybe automatic payment program so you can use f110 also and display vendor balances is let's say fk10n okay so these are the different transactions what we were using in case of traditional gui now we want the corresponding fiori apps which fiori app i should use to create a purchase order which app i should use to book the supplier invoice so what you are going to do is just remember one link which is very important link go to google and write sap fiori apps library okay sap fiori apps library it will open this link fiori apps library dot hana dot on demand dot com just open this okay and this is a link which has all the information of all the apps fiori apps which are available till today okay so i'll click on all apps right and here you just write the transaction code okay so the first one i want is i want a corresponding app for me21n i don't know what apps are provided by sap to create a purchase order so i will just write me21n and click on search what system will do is system will give me the list of all those fiori apps which are relevant to this transaction which means all those fiori apps using which you can create a purchase order okay so you can see create purchase order create purchase order so there are different options and manage purchase order this manage purchase order is a new app which was not available in traditional gui at all okay manage purchase order means single screen which will allow you to create a purchase order change a purchase order display a purchase order so normally what we do is we use me21 n to create me22 n to change and me23 n to display okay instead of that one single app which will allow you to do all the three things so for example i identified this app and i want to provide the necessary authorization of this particular app to my user or maybe i want to use this particular app and i want to make sure that my user is authorized to access this particular app so what i need to do is i need the role i need to know which role i should assign to the end user so that that user is able to see this particular transaction so what you need to do is click on this okay it will open this screen for you okay and once this screen is opened just go to the implementation information before that if you want to see the details of what exactly this app is all about some screenshots are also available if you want to see okay and then you can go to the implementation information in the implementation information you need to select your version properly so if you are working on 1909 you will select 1909 but it is not necessary let's say after this course or maybe even now if you are already working on sap s4 hana but you are working on the previous versions so what you will do is you will select which version you want to uh, you want to set up in which version you want to set up this particular app so as of now i am looking for 1909 so i'll not change anything and if you click on this configuration okay it will provide you a lot of technical details but most importantly it is providing you the roles so it is telling you if you want to give this user this particular transaction then these are the standard roles which are available from sap if i assign any of this role to my user the user will be able to see this particular app let's see 
So as of now, I'm only able to see this. I'm not able to see anything related to purchasing. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly copy one of this role purchaser and assign to my user ID. Okay, so I'll go to the roles and I'll assign this particular to my user ID. Okay, and save. So next time when you go to Fiori, okay, and if you just say refresh, it will show you all those applications, all those Fiori apps which are related to this particular role. So you can see I'm able to see most of the things which are related to purchasing. As a purchaser, I can create the purchase orders, I can monitor the purchase orders, I can manage the purchase requisitions. I can create the source of supply. So based on this role, all these applications will be available to this particular end user. Right? Now what will happen but, if you don't want... But, yeah, sorry. but you, you have assigned only one transaction code, but here we see the multiple transactions are assigned. No, no, no. I assigned the role. I have not assigned the transaction. I assigned the role. Within the role, there can be multiple applications. Okay. But we search, we search the ME21 transaction based role, then we assign that role to the your ID. It right. means so in that role. Hmm. Yeah, see what we have done is we have searched for one transaction ME21N, and system is showing us this transaction is available within which role. So this transaction is available within this four roles. We copied this, but it is not necessary that this role consists of only one transaction. Normally, we don't create a role only for one transaction, right? We create a role so that multiple transactions can be combined in one single role. Correct. Right, so we copied this role and we assigned. So this role is having a lot of different apps which are available to the business. So if I assign this role, the user will be able to see all these details. But due to some reason, let's say, I don't want to give all these transactions or all these Fiori apps to the user. Okay, I only want to give the partial of these apps. So what you should normally do, even in ECC, we follow the same thing. What we do? Create separate role. Exactly, we need to copy the standard roles. We need to create a Z role out of it, and we can divide that into two, three, four, whatever number of parts are required, right? So SAP has provided the standard roles, same as ECC. Even in ECC, if you see your system, most of the roles that you are using are Z, but that doesn't mean that SAP has not provided the roles. SAP has provided the standard roles, but looking at our requirement, we may need to divide the main role into multiple parts, and that is the reason why we create a Z, right? So even in Fiori also, if you want to divide the roles into multiple parts, you can always create your Z roles and you can assign to the end user. Okay, so what we understood till now, SAP Fiori is a web-based portal. Okay, number one, it consists of various different apps. Which apps will appear? It depends upon the authorization. Whatever roles are assigned to you, based on that system will show you different apps now let's try to understand if i go to this role okay so which role i assigned to my user id i assigned this particular role purchaser if you double click on this purchaser it will take you to the pfcg screen where you'll be able to see the details of this role and in the menu bar you'll be able to see what are the different roles or what are the different apps which are available within this particular role. So let's compare this with this screen. See what is happening. Purchase order processing, source of supply management, purchase contract processing. Let's go and see here. So purchase order processing, source of supply management, contract processing, then you have scheduling agreement, purchase requisition processing. So you have scheduling agreement, purchase requisition processing. So these are called as groups. Okay, purchase order processing is one group within which we have one, two, three, four, five, six apps. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six apps are part of this group. 
Similarly, source of supply management is another group where we have one, two, three, four, five, six apps. In purchase contract processing, we have three apps. So what is happening is within each role, within this role, you have different groups. So if I copy this group, let's double click on this. It will open the group name. This is a group name. Let's copy this. Okay. And again, this is what I'm discussing currently is completely Fiori task, but this is just for your understanding how the role based concept works in SAP Fiori. So there is another screen called as UI2 slash FLPD underscore customizing, which will be done by your Fiori consultant. Okay, so if you double click on this, it will again get opened in the web browser. So as I told you, I will copy this in Google Chrome. Okay, instead of Internet Explorer, there is something wrong in this server related to Internet Explorer. So just enter. Okay, this is a screen where there are multiple groups. So what we have done is we copied the group. I'm pasting it here. Sorry, it is not copied properly. What are the groups? So if I go to PFCG, this is a group. Just copy this group and paste it here. Okay, so this group, if I say search, uh, it should show the value. Is it copied properly? Let's try once again. Purchase order processing. This should be fine. Let's go for source of supply management. Let's copy this. Yeah, maybe I'm doing wrong. I'm going for the catalogs, not for catalogs. You need to go for groups. Just click on group. Okay, and enter your group here and click on search. You can see this is a group. If you click on this group, there are one, two, three, four, five, six apps. Okay, in this particular group, there are six apps and internally there are links. These are the internal links, which means if you open this and within this, there are some links provided. When you click on that link, it will take you to another apps. So in short, if I assign my user to this particular group, okay, then he'll be able to see this many number of apps. Let's see. So this is source of supply management. If you go to source of supply management, this one. So manage source of supply, manage purchasing info record. Like this, you have six apps. So if you want to create your Z role and you want to delete this manage source list from there, that you can do by changing this, okay, which is not recommended to do in the standard roles. Don't try to change anything in the standard roles because otherwise we will struggle whenever we are practicing, right? So, but if there is a requirement, then your Fiori consultant, what they will do is they will create a Z role out of it or a Z group out of it and they will make the necessary changes. So you can add also and you can delete also whatever is available. Okay, so just remember what we discussed is Let me start the new notepad. So user is assigned to what? In the user master you assign role. In the role, what do you assign? Group. Group. In the group you assign apps, right? There is one more level in between, which is catalog. Catalog is nothing but group of groups. Okay, let me show you. So if you go to roles, within roles, there are some groups and there are some catalogs. These are catalogs. So for example, if I double click on this, you can see this is a catalog. Within one catalog, you can have multiple groups. Let's try to copy this catalog. 
Okay, so let's copy this catalog and go to the screen. And instead of groups, let's go to the catalogs this time. Here you enter your catalog, what we copied just now, and click on search. So you can see under this catalog, these are the different tiles which you can directly assign or you can assign the groups. So in catalog, you can either assign the tiles directly or you can assign the groups within it. Right, so there are multiple levels. Number one is the user. Now when the user is logging in, in the system, how many apps he'll be able to see that totally depends upon which role is assigned to the user, which catalog is assigned to the role, which group is assigned to the catalog and which apps are assigned to this group. This is very important question from Fiori point of view, which is asked in the exam. What are the different components of the role based concept in SAP S4 HANA Fiori? OK, they can ask you true or false. Group is a collection of apps, true or false, or apps is a collection of group. One role consists of multiple catalogs and groups, true or false. Or group is a collection of catalogs. So you need to be very clear with the flow. One user may have multiple roles. One role may have multiple catalogs. One catalog may have multiple groups and one group can have multiple apps. Clear with this now? Role based concept, how exactly it works in SAP? The other okay in this screen, right? You are saying like which is the group and uh, which is the catalog. I'm not able to get it clearly. Yeah, see, this is a catalog. Now, in this case, yeah. the catalog that I copied, it is showing the direct apps. In the catalog, you can have the direct apps or you can have the link to the groups. So maybe I'll show you some other catalog where you'll be able to see the groups within the catalog. Oh, in this, there is no group you are saying, right? Yeah, in this particular one, there was no group. Oh, okay, okay. That's why I'm not able to see the difference. Let's, let's try anything else. If I go with this. No, I think now it is directly showing you the apps, but these are apps are actually coming from the groups. See anyone else? I think they changed in, in uh, this one now, the latest version, but let me see if I can show you in 1809. So what is happening is, okay, let's try to click on one and let's, See, so these are tiles and these are the target mappings. This is how you can tell the system which app can be accessed from where. So you can see this particular app can be accessed from desktop, can be accessed from tablet, can be also accessed from the mob mobile phones. Okay, but if you want a particular app to be blocked that I want, don't want to give the authorization to use this particular app on phone, you can do it from here. So you can go into the change board and you can change the settings which app is allowed to be accessed from mobile tabs or desktops. OK, but let me show you one example of collection of groups. No, this this screen they have changed now. So there is small change in this one, but the purpose is same catalog is nothing but the collection of groups. Within one catalog, you have multiple groups and within the groups, you have multiple apps. So the flow will be always like this. Okay, user can be assigned to multiple roles. Multiple catalogs can be assigned to one role. Multiple groups can be directly assigned to the role or via catalog. And then apps can be assigned to the group, to the catalog or to the role directly. Okay, thanks. One question. Yeah. So basically, you know, so far, once you log into the, you know, Fairy app, we can see the groups, right? Under the groups, right. we can see the apps. But when the this catalog comes into the picture, uh, we can see once you log into the as a Fairy no, user. No, catalog, catalog, you'll not yeah, be able catalog. to see Fiori home screen. In the home screen, you'll be only able to see groups and apps. You'll not be able to see catalog roles and the user. It will be only groups and apps. So catalogs can be assigned to the group or the app. Groups can be assigned to the catalog. 
let me show you see oh. for example in this particular scenario i'm just giving you the example the source of supply management and purchase contract processing these are two groups right what i can do is these two groups i can combine in one catalog and that catalog i will assign to the role and role will be assigned to the user so what will happen is my user is assigned to the role in which there is only one catalog under that catalog i have two groups right and under this each group i have this many number of apps okay got it. okay so here in this screen you will be only able to see the groups and you will be able to see the apps now these are the standard groups which are provided to you by the standard roles you can also create your favorites you can also create your own groups once you are in the launch pad okay so let me show you what are the things that you can change on your own in the launch pad can you right? say the purchase contract processing schedule agreement processing or the groups is it these are all groups yes okay okay these are all groups consist of different number of apps within it okay okay got it thank you okay so now this sap fiori also allows you allows the users to customize their layout they can decide which one which app is important which they need on day to day basis and which are the apps which are not very much important so they can move it to the last page of the uh, fiori screen okay so what you can do is you can click on this user button here and from the user button you can go to the edit home page okay this is your home page which you want to edit so click on edit home page you can see now we are in the edit mode and that is a reason system is allowing us to create the groups okay you can see system is allowing us to create the groups system is also allowing us to add the apps within the standard groups but this will not change the main group right this is only for your user whatever you are doing here this is only applicable to your user okay so for example in purchase order processing we are seen that in the group there are only six apps so if i add the seventh app that will not go and change my definition of the purchase order processing group it will only applicable for my user id okay so from the standard system the six apps are appearing but i am adding seventh app which will be only applicable to my user id okay so let's say i want to delete this <coughs> so although my security consultant has provided me this app but i know that i don't use this on day to day basis and i don't want to get confused unnecessarily so i want to delete it so what i can do is just cross it and click on close so once you make your changes click on close now you can see you are only able to see four you are not able to see that fifth app okay later on you realize no i want it back so again you can go to this user you can go to this edit home page okay and you can click on this app it will show you all the available apps okay so for example you can see uh, from the different groups these are the different groups and it is allowing you in which group you want to add what so i want to go for let's say uh purchase order processing so these are the different apps which i can bring it into my main screen so i want to add this purchase create purchase order screen to my purchase order processing group if i click on this and click on close okay just by going back is it going back yeah going back and click on close so you can see this app has been added sorry not here it would be in the purchase order processing where is purchase order processing purchase order processing is here so you can see this create purchase order screen has been added this we added just now so as of now 1 2 3 4 5 in purchase order processing if i want to reset it if i want to go to the basic settings what was already there so if you click on reset 
it will remove all those changes that you made and it will make as it is so you can see manage purchase requisition is back right again if you delete it and now you don't remember what exactly you have done so you just click on the reset button it will bring to the standard settings okay which means this will again come back just like favorites now i have this different groups but i want to create purchase requisition and create purchase order i want this apps to be available in my favorites so what i can do is i can click on add groups okay it will ask me the name of the group that you want to give so i want to give this name as favorites okay and click on new it will give me the list of all the apps which are allowed to my user id see it is not showing anything related to sales it is not showing anything related to finance why because this user can only select from those apps for which he has the authorization okay so i want to see the procurement overview page and i want to see maybe create purchase requisition or manage purchase requisition which will be available within purchase requisition so requirement processing so this is create purchase requisition i want to add this i want to add display purchase requisition also so whatever you are selecting it is getting highlighted here right and once you are done so we added three apps under our favorites okay so within the favorites you will be able to see those three apps why it is not showing it should show those three apps let's try once again so procurement overview page has been added to favorites let's come out and see yes this is how it should look like so click on new select my inbox select material price variance i'm just selecting randomly just go back you'll be able to see those things are added so whatever you think i need on day to day basis that should appear on top you can create your own group and it will appear but this group will not get created in the library this group will not automatically get created here because this is a custom group that you are creating for your user it has nothing to do with the groups which are already available by the system right so whatever changes you are making this is only relevant to your own user so you are customizing your own screen without changing any settings in the standard groups and catalogs right so you can delete you can add you can create a new group and once you are done with your changes you can close it right so you can see favorites are appearing on top which means whatever transactions you need on day to day basis you can keep on adding here and you don't need to worry about all other things right there are some other things also which you can do using this edit home page or maybe let's go to the settings in settings you have the appearance i think it is blocked in this particular case let's see just wait for a minute yeah i think it is blocked i am not allowed to change no it it is slow so it will come yeah it has come now so let's try once again settings appearance so you can see these are the themes okay similar to you have themes in traditional gui also right so if you want to change the color if you want to go for the white color if you want to go for the black color so for example i will go with this one okay once you are done this click on save so you can see the complete appearance has been changed so you can decide what color you want to see you can decide which apps you want to bring up which apps you want to delete it from your launch pad so this is completely done by the user okay you don't need any consultant or any special privilege to do this any user who has the access to fiori he has the access to modify his own home page and his own own uh, settings related to the theme okay even if you go to the display settings there are some other things optimize for touch input this is mainly for the mobile device animation if uh, again this is mainly divide for the mobile this uh, designed for the mobile 
so it is not applicable here home page we already discussed show all content or show one group at a time so if i say show one group at a time see what will happen so whenever you click on a particular group it will only show you the activities related to that particular group okay it will not unnecessarily load all the apps it will only load the apps which is for the group which is selected Hello Vikram, we are not able to hear you. There's some problem. Hello, Garo. Uh, hello, is there a problem with everyone? Like, we are not able to hear Vikram? Yes, yes. Same problem. Yeah, I think we got some message in the right uh, that there's some technical difficulty the host is facing, I think. So maybe he's able. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now. Yes, now yes, Garo. No, we yeah, sorry, there was a network disconnection. The power goes off and took time to please go. Okay. Can you see my screen now also? <clears throat> yes. 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 Uh, yes. Okay. So I was explaining you this one from the settings. You can go and you can tell the system that I want to see one group at a time. Okay. So instead of showing all the content, when you select a group, it will only show you that particular content. So you can go for show all content or you can go for show one group at a time. Okay, and also the default values. Now, for example, I am a user and I want by default, I should be only able to see my company code. So I don't want to provide company code again and again. I want to make sure that whenever I log in with my user ID, uh, system automatically propose the company code system automatically propose the currency settings even if you want to propose material plant supplier you can enter all those things here so system will by default every time you don't need to enter all these details system will already propose this values to you okay so let's say if i am a mainly this is from the reporting point of view from the transactional point of view is also fine but when you are generating the analytical reports you don't need to again and again select that I want to see the information for this particular plant or this particular company code. Automatically, system will by default show you that particular company code details. And then if you want to change, you can change it. Again, provided you have the necessary authorizations for other company codes. So if you are a user and you already only have the access to one company code, only that information will be available to you. So that is not a new thing, even in ECC also you have the authorization object for the company codes, right? Same thing will apply here also. Okay, so using this, you can customize your own 
SAP Fiori Launchpad. Okay, so we understood how the roles works in SAP Fiori. We understood what is SAP Fiori apps library. This is a very important thing. Most of the time when you are working on the project, okay, definitely if it, uh, whenever you are working on the roles and authorizations, this is a very handy link which you will be using always. From the Fiori point of view, if you go to the Fiori consultant, most of the time whenever he's working on any Fiori uh, development or maybe any standard Fiori app, he will be opening this to identify what are the objects being used in the background. Okay, so that is one way. I told you, you can enter the transaction code and you can identify which particular app I should use in order to access a particular transaction. There is another way also. Okay, now maybe tomorrow we are going to discuss about SAP Activate. So I will tell you how are you going to start the project and what are the activities that you need to take care during the initial phase of the project. How are you going to collect the requirements from the customer? How it is different than SAP SF methodology? But I just want to show you one thing that is called as SAP based practices. SAP S4 HANA based practices. So again, you can go to Google and just write SAP based practices explorer. Okay, what exactly is this? Just open it. Okay, it will ask you to log in. If you don't log in, it will not provide you the complete details. Okay, if you log in, then only you will be able to see the complete details. Login can be done from your company's uh, S user ID or your personal user ID is fine. Okay, so let me log in with my user ID. Don't worry about this. It is again asking to log in. Let's try. No, there is something wrong with this link today. Normally, this link works. When you log in, you will be able to see all the details. If you don't log in, then you will be able to see only few details. Okay, but maybe tomorrow we will try again. But as of now, I'll just show you what is important here. So maybe let's close this. Close this also. Okay, so this is Base Practices Explorer. What do you mean by Base Practices? So if you remember, we discussed about if you are going for cloud, the only option for you is to use the SAP based practices. You cannot make much modifications. You have to use the SAP system as told by SAP. So SAP has given you the proper documentation. How are you going to do the transaction from the end user point of view? So whatever documentation is provided from SAP now, it is completely Fiori based. Okay, so for example, if you want to go for accounts payables, how are you going to execute the accounts payable transactions? How are you going to create a vendor? How are you going to put the invoice? All those things are available in the base practices. So if I show you S4 HANA uh, base practices, just open this. Why it is showing 11? 11 means there are 11 different products on SAP S4 HANA from SAP. Okay, so all the products are not relevant to us, but for us, the most relevant is SAP base practices for SAP S4 HANA on premise. So open this. Okay, and here you will find for each and every module. You can see for each and every module SAP has provided the complete scope. Okay, so for example, if I click on finance within how to perform the accounting and financial close, how to uh, go for the accounts payables and accounts receivables that is part of financial operations. If you click on financial operations, so complete process of accounts payables complete process of accounts receivables. All these things are available here. So let's try to open this accounts payables. Let's try if it works. No, some problem. 
Okay, so you will only get partial information. If I'm not logged in, I'll tell you what exactly you will not get here. Can someone from your side try this? Uh, how to access the best practices? Just go to Google because I want to make sure that is there anything wrong with my system? Because normally it when I click on login button, it asks me user ID and password and it takes me to this particular screen. OK, so now this within accounts payables SAP has provided the complete process flow. OK, and they also provided the test script. That test script I'll be only able to see once I log in with my credentials. OK, once I log in with my credentials, when I click on the test script in that test script, each and everything is available. I think I have the downloaded test script. Yeah, I have one of the downloaded test script. This is not relevant to finance. This is relevant to logistics. Actually, let's see what is this process procurement of direct material, which means creation of purchase order, doing the Migo, doing the Miro. Everything is explained in this. OK, so for example. If I want to know how can I create a purchase order in SAP Fiori so I can come to this file. And you can see all the activities are mentioned here. How to uh, create a purchase order? You can see this is a create purchase order screen. So if I open this, see it is clearly telling you that in order to create a purchase order, which app are you going to use? You can use Manage Purchase Order app. Okay, same way. If I want to do the, if I want to create a vendor, which is part of business partner now, right? So if I want to create a Vendor, what should I do? So you can see here, change the supplier master. So this is nothing but which app I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the app called as Maintain Business Partner. So similarly, maybe tomorrow we will try for accounts payables and accounts receivables in SAP Activate. I also show you what are the different base practices available. So SAP has provided this complete document in which it is like an end user manual. OK, as an end user, what are the different apps that I can use using Fiori? Right. What are the different uh, data that you can enter? OK, it is like a apart from the screenshots. This can be treated as a end user document which can be given to the end user also whenever you are working on the real time project. OK, so instead of creating the end user manuals from scratch, we can always use this as an end user manual and also as a UAT document. Okay, why UAT document? If you see this, this is a format of UAT itself. So you will open this particular app, you will enter this information. This is the expected result, and you will ask for the comments from the business whether it is working as per the business requirements or not. Right? So this document can also be served as a UAT document. So end user document, UAT document will now not take that much time because SAP has already provided the pre delivered templates which can be used if you just want to add the screenshots you can add otherwise no need to add anything else only you need to add if you are applying any custom processes if you are going with the base practices then no need to do anything else you can just use this template as it is OK, so that is another way of. Knowing which app I should use for what purpose. So one is if you just want one app, you can come here. You can enter the transaction code. It will tell you which app to use. But if you want to do the complete cycle and you want to know how can I create a purchase order? Then how can I create a Migo? Then how can I do the Miro? Then I, how can I do the payment? So you can go for the complete process. OK, and that documentation is available as a part of base practices. OK, clear till now. Any questions of what your topics we discussed till now? Uh, as per your, um, we can access the self fury through mobile, but let's suppose we are out from our company network, then it is accessible or it is accessible only in the company premises. So that totally depends upon your organization policy. The ultimate aim of this fury is that you should not be location restricted. Right, why we are talking about Fiori so that if you are traveling, then also you should be able to do most important tasks from mobile device. But at the same time, whether your company is allowing you to do those activities or not, definitely for the top management, they will allow. But for the other users, I don't think 
company will allow to do the transaction from mobile devices but it is i mean the answer is it totally depends upon the company's policy technically it is possible technically you don't need to be in the company's network technically you can be connected to the internet and then you can do anything in sap fiori okay okay and, and one question when we click the each for example if you take this uh, you know, the tile manage purchase contracts so mm -hmm. once you click that uh, tile there is a program which execute behind correct so that right. can be seen using the uh, fiori designer or uh, like no, one that, program it that, is called no, that program is called as po data service so for each app there is a corresponding o data service in the background so if you want to see oh. which o data service is being called for a particular program that you, again you mm -hmm. can get here in this fiori apps library so if you just go down you will be able to see o data service okay so each tile is related to the o data service program yes so maybe i'll show you for manage purchase orders see Yeah, you can see this O data service. So this service is being called in the background. Okay, got it. And and one more thing is uh, you mentioned that uh, you know one of the settings you mentioned uh, uh, this program can be accessed by the desktop or the mobile device or the iPad or something, right? Mm -hmm. So other than that, uh, if I want to access the same app using the iPad, is there any other settings required at the high level? other than that yes so see that is completely controllable you can clearly give the instruction to the system that this particular app should be accessed from which which devices even at the device level so you know today also if you want yeah. to give the access to the particular laptop there also you write the ip of that laptop and you give the access right so same thing yeah, can yeah. work in So it can happen that from the internet also, from your mobile, you are able to access a particular thing, but another user is not able to access. That is because for that mobile, whatever has been the settings, they are managed and maybe for the top management, they have given uh, the access to their mobile, but for other mobiles, it is not working. So it can be done at the device level also. Okay. Uh, yeah, go on. Yes. Yeah, uh, this one for till now we have seen only the user transactions, but mm -hmm. uh, how about the uh, customizing transactions? Can we use through Fiery even? Yes, yes. So if you want to use customized transactions, what you can do is your Fiori developer will create a uh, app for you. Okay, oh. and. Just remember, see, customized transaction, let's assume, we, we, although we are going to talk about this in detail, but I'm just giving you the overview as of now since you asked. So let's say you want to create one report. You want to create one accounts payable report, which is not available in the standard system. So what you will do is normally in ECC, what we were doing is we were giving the requirements to the ABAP consultant because ABAP consultant was doing the front end as well as back end, right? Yes. But now, if your front end is Fiori, so in addition to the ABAP consultant, ABAP consultant will write the logic from which table the data needs to be picked, but how it should be displayed in Fiori. That is the job of the Fiori consultant. So, in short, you will give the FS, you will write which table to be used in background and how you want to see this report in the front end, but the front end part would be designed by the Fiori. And backend part would be designed by ABAP. Okay. Uh, you were touching. I mean, hopefully you're finished. Uh, you were touching on the IMG actually. So, how are those things like we are bringing into the tile, or how we are accessing through Fiori? Yeah. So, see, uh, if you are using SAP S4 HANA on premise. You can do the IMG activities, that is configuration activities from SPRO because you have the SPRO access in case of on-premise. Plus, some of the apps or some of the configurations can be done from Fiori also, right? But if you are talking about cloud, 
if you are working on S4 HANA cloud, then we don't have the SPRO access, which means all the configuration needs to be done only via Fiori only. That is called as guided configuration. That is a topic that we are going to discuss tomorrow. What is guided configuration? Uh, how to access the guided configuration and whether it will be available on cloud or on premise. Okay, okay, so tomorrow thanks. that will get clear to this. Okay, one last thing which I want to talk about SAP Fiori. So although uh, this is an overview session on Fiori, uh, the transactional level we will see one cycle on Fiori at the end of the course once we complete uh, the understanding of the configuration changes, what has been changed in the GL, what has been changed in asset accounting. So at the end of the course, we will see one simple transaction how to carry out through Fiori. So how to create a payment from Fiori or how to create an invoice or how to create a new GL from Fiori. I will show you those things at the end. I can show you now also, but uh, at, as of now, we don't have the data. We have still not created any company code. So that is the reason we will pass this thing towards the end. So last thing which you should remember, I think the thing which uh, uh, Mahesh answered first of all, what is Fiori? So that is, what are the different types of apps? Okay, so there are different types of apps on Fiori. Number one is transactional apps. Second is analytical apps. And number three is fact sheets. Okay, so what is the difference? The name itself tells very clearly transactional apps are the apps which allows to do transactions. Okay, what do you mean by that? Apps which allows you to do the transactions, which means whenever you are, uh, let's say you are creating a new GL or you are creating the, you are posting the invoice or you are making the payment, these are all transactions, right? So the apps which will allow you to do the transaction are called as trans transactional apps. What are analytical apps? Analytical apps means I want to see the reports. The reports can be graphical format or they can be tabular format. So if I want to see the graphical reports, for example, those are analytical apps. So what kind of analytical apps are available? So if I want to see, let's see if there is any analytical apps available as of now in our launchpad. I don't think so because we only provided the access of purchase order. But let's see what is the analytic analytical apps for finance available. So let's go for analytics. Okay, so for example, let's try I'm not sure whether this will work as of now or not, but I just want to show you one example of analytical apps. So let's talk about accounts payable overview. Okay, and you'll be able to see what is the type of this app here. So you can see this application is of type analytical. Okay, so accounts payable overview is analytical application, right? So accounts payable apps, if I want to see this as of now, if I try, I'll not be able to see because I have not assigned the role, right? So accounts payables, anything, I'll not be able to see anything. I don't have the right of accounts payables at all. So what should I do? I will go to the library and for this app, I will go to the roles section and I will copy the role and assign to my user ID. So this is a role which will allow me to see this particular app. So let's do this thing, maintain users and here I will assign this role. Okay, accounts payable manager. Now again, if I go to my Fiori screen homepage and try to refresh, okay, let's try to avoid the confusion. So I will remove this purchasing related. I don't want to see all these apps which are related to purchasing anymore. So I will remove this purchaser app, delete this, and save it, right? So again, let's refresh this. Now I should be only able to see the things related to accounts payables. You can see analytics for accounts payables. Just click on this. So these are the different apps which are related to analytics. 
okay let's see if it works because i have not tried this this is a complete new system there is no data as of now we will create the data and then we will try and detail okay so overdue payables days payable outstanding okay cash discount forecast this kind of analytics was never available in sap ecc there were different reports which you need to execute independently and then you were creating your own reports in the form of excel or maybe if you are using bw then only you will be able to generate this kind of reports but now uh, maybe we will see later on as of now there is no data that is the reason it is not showing any data but if you see this once we post any data you'll be able to see the graphical reports here if you click on this it will show you the complete detail about that particular report that too in the graphical format you can change the criteria i want to see by company code or i want to see top 10 suppliers or i want to see top 10 suppliers by lowest dpo okay days payable outstanding which means from how many days this we are not paid to this supplier right so these are various factors which you can see which were never possible to generate in sap ecc system normally we were generating z reports if customer is requesting to provide the dpo reports and all those were all z okay and if you want to see the analytics it was only possible if you are using bw but now there is embedded bw in place that is the reason there are a lot of analytical reports which you can generate okay so transactional apps will allow you to do the transactions analytical apps will allow you to see the analytical reports in the graphical format also and fact sheet the example of this is dashboard okay so think about the top management think about the ceos or mds they don't want to see each and every report individually they want to see just a single screen where they get a complete idea just think about your car okay so either car or your uh, bike so you have a dashboard there which shows you three four indicators it tells you how much speed you are driving it also tells you how much uh, fuel you have in the uh, vehicle right it also tells you revolutions per minute so there are three four indicators which you are getting at once you are not going to uh, another another report to see all these things in one single dashboard you are able to see multiple reports and based on that reports you can take the necessary decisions right so for example if you are looking at your dashboard and you found out that the fuel is less you will take a decision to uh, refill the fuel right same way from the management point of view they don't want to go in each and every report separately they want to see in the dashboard what exactly is the status of the organization how our business is performing and if there is any decision to be taken they take the decision looking at the dashboard itself right so as of now since there is no data uh, i'll not be able to show you any dashboard but we will see uh, once we do the transactions then we will go and see what are the different transactional apps what are the different analytical apps and what are the different fact sheets available from the financial point of view okay so any questions yeah Gaurav, uh, whatever there is nothing called configuration apps only three types of... no that is called as guided configuration so that topic is actually guided configuration So, so it is not considered as a type of app mm, no at least in the sap's terminologies they don't treat this as the fiori apps but obviously the uh, even if they are not talking about it but definitely these are also one type of app that they should consider okay, okay but i don't want to uh, confuse you because if the question comes in the exam these are the three answers okay and in transactional apps, uh, even uh, uh, what they call that one, master data apps also included, right? Yes, yes, yes. Transactional means any kind of transaction. Okay. Yes, okay. So there is no separate Fiori app for uh, master data. It is part of the transactional apps itself. Okay. okay. Should we search for fact sheet for the fact sheet, uh, what is it, tiles apps? Yeah, we can we can go fact sheet if you want. You can just write here in the Fiori apps library. Let's see if it shows you the fact sheets. Uh, 
But again, so I think we need to have the data. The, yeah, definitely. We don't have data. That is the reason I am not referring to show it today. But just an example, I can definitely show you like what exactly is the fact sheet. So which one I should use? I don't know what is this. Let's try. Is this a fact sheet? Yes, this is a fact sheet. So fixed assets for S4 HANA. Okay, this is a fact sheet. As of now, we don't have any data, so we'll not be able to execute it. But I'll show you some examples later on whenever we are going to talk about this. Okay. So any questions till now before we close today's session? Okay, so tomorrow we are going to talk about SAP Activate. Within SAP, tomorrow would be our last session, which would be theoretical. Okay, so we will cover all the conceptual level uh, which is required for this course. Now you understand why HANA is faster, what are the basic properties of S4 HANA, what is Fiori. Tomorrow you will also understand how to implement SAP S4 HANA projects because you are not going to work anymore on the SF methodology. At least it is recommended by SAP. If you are following or not, it is up to you. But most of the companies, at least from the outside, they are saying that we are following the latest methodology that is SAP Activate. So whenever you are working for any company who is implementing S4 HANA, they are expecting that you follow SAP Activate methodology. So we talk about that and from next week onwards, we will start directly in the system. We will create some company code, we will run the code S4 HANA compared to ECP. Okay, so can we close? Any questions before we close today? No, not as if now. We're no, good. Okay, no problem. So, anyways, if you have any questions, you can clarify in any of the session. It is not like if you have the question to this topic, you can ask now itself. Tomorrow, also, if you come across something, you can ask a question. Okay, then thank you all. See you tomorrow, same time. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank bye, Guru. Thank you. Okay,